Hey guys, Cypress here at the Velden 2 Aside Trick. Over the years, I have noticed many people having quite a bit of trouble with this trick, so I thought I'd finally put together a somewhat in depth tutorial on this trick in particular and SIs in general. In this tutorial, I will be covering common SI mistakes, how I do my SIs, and finally, we'll move on to this trick in particular. So, let's get started. By far the biggest problem people have with SIs is them getting dropped. For example, you're doing your SIs and suddenly you can't do them anymore and you fall to your death. There are two very common ways of dropping your SIs. The first one being grinding up against the slope you're trying to SI from. You must give Ratchet enough room to do a hover before doing any SI, otherwise they just will not work. So if I just do the SI inputs but continuously try to grind up against the slope without giving Ratchet in enough room to hover, they just will not work at all. So. You have to make sure to give Ratchet enough room to do a hover before doing another SI. Otherwise, there's no way they they will work and at that point they're very hard to recover. Uh, method number two of dropping your SIs um, doesn't seem so straightforward. You think you're doing everything correctly, you're, you're doing inputs correctly, you're sure you're given in, in a, uh, enough room for Ratchet to hover, but they still drop, like they did there. What is going on? Well, your inputs were correct, you were giving Ratchet enough room, however, your timing was unfortunately off. What happens is... Uh, when you mash X when you hover down, you can see Ratchet stopping his SI every uh, second interval or so for a split second. Now, unfortunately, during that sp split second, you are vulnerable to dropping your SI, and it's uh, basically the same as grinding up uh, up against the slope at that point. So. You must time your SIs in such a way that you never hit uh, the slope while uh, Ratchet is, is stopping the hover for that split second. Otherwise, that will happen. So, how do you uh, prevent these mistakes? And how do you do SIs properly? Well, I'll demonstrate that now. This is how I've been doing SIs. This is just my method of doing them, and I've been doing them this way for years successfully. So for me, this is a tried and true method. Okay, so say you're standing on a ground and you want to SI on a slope just ahead of you. What I do is I start off just by doing a high jump and at the peak of my uh, high jump I start holding forward and mashing X at the same time so like this and that will guarantee to start off your SI's every time how do I continue them uh, after that well after that, it's just um, it's it's just the same thing, really, just repeating the process. So, like this, you can see on the inputs. However, this can potentially be dangerous uh, because you usually continue forward momentum from your previous jump. If you carry on too much uh, forward momentum, you will grind up, up up against the slope and lose your SI. I pre prevent this 
by um, after starting off my SIs, just going back and forward again. Easy as that. Now, say you have to start an SI already from a hover. Say um, I came from a place higher up and I have to glide down upon the slope and start my SI from there. How do I do that? Well, I just hold uh, R1, X to hover, and I hover towards the slope until I'm about one ratchet's depth length away from the slope. After that, I just uh, keep uh, mashing X, and f f from there it's business as usual, so like so. Get close. One ratchet's length depth, I mean, one ratchet's depth length away from, from the slope, so... Now, there you go. Just like that, and after that, it's business as usual. After that, it's just the back and forth, like that, until you get to your destination. So, now that we've covered uh, SIs and how to mitigate common mistakes, let's move on to this trick in particular. So, this trick has is is a string of seven SIs in total. And they are in the following locations. The first one is on this mountain edge here. This mountain edge is a little bit hard to see, but um, if you can see these two mountain edges, it, it goes down diagonally here where they meet. So your first SI is here, and you want to be looking out for, for these edges because um, they serve as very useful guides for a lot of the SIs. So first one is on this edge. The second one is on the same mountain but on this darker edge here, on this really dark edge. It's gonna be about here, your second SI. For, from your first SI, to the second, you can just mash X like um, as, soon as, you, as soon as you have done a high jump from this uh, edge, you can just mash X until you, you do another SI of this one. So the first two are pretty easy. Third one is going to be on this big mountain here. And once again, you're, you've got to be looking out for an edge in case it's this one right here. So, there are these dark lines on the mountain, there's one set here, another one uh, is barely visible, it's here. Uh, you're gonna land it just above the second set, over here, on the edge. So about here is your third SI. Your fourth SI is still gonna be on the same edge, but it's gonna be... Uh, close to these really dark lines up here. So your fourth SI is gonna be about here. Your fifth SI, you you wanna look at this big mountain here. Um, you're gonna be looking at this like rectangular section of the mountain, and in particular this like uh, circular shadow. Your fifth SI is gonna be inside of this circle, about here-ish. There's your fifth SI. Your sixth uh, SI is, is still gonna be on the same uh, mountain, but on the edge next to the one you just SI'd from. So this is the one you've just been on. The next SI is gonna be on this really dark edge. It's just barely visible here, but it's next to um, the, the circle. And it's going to be on this really dark part. That's your second to last SI. And your last SI is behind this mountain. You can't see it, so I'll explain it when we get to it. You might want to pull out the bomb glove uh, here. It might help you judge the depth. It helps me, but it might also mess you up. It, it helps some, it hinders others. So 
it's it's really up to you. You're gonna have to experiment with this yourself. Anyway. To get to the first SI, you can either long jump, that's faster, but high jump works just as well if you're not feeling so confident. I'm gonna do high jump. Also, as always, look out for the edges, so aiming t towards the edge. In the circle. Dark edge. Okay, so the last um, S SI, um, right after you've done the second uh, to last SI, you, you just want to hold um, forward to be in flush with the m mountain. And uh, the mountain curves around to the right, so when it does, you want to hold your stick uh, diagonally upright at that point when the mountain curves and um, the scenery is going to obscure your view a little bit you're not going to be able to see Ratchet at this point but uh, when you can see him again once you get past that um, obstruction you want to wait like half a second and then start mashing X for the final SI the last SI is very tricky um, it's very specific, but if you hold the analog stick in the right way and start m uh, mashing X, uh, you will get it every time. I mean, if you start mashing X at the correct time, so half a second after you see Ratchet again, you'll get this SI. So, it curves, so tur turn your stick. Wait a half a second, start mashing X. There you go. And after you, you land here, you you want to land um, as far to the left as you can to avoid the gold bolt that's usually here. You, you want to avoid it for any percent. But yeah, that is the SI in a nutshell. Also, one thing I wanted to quickly uh, cover is um, mashing is the best for SIs. You can do them with just one X press, but that is needlessly hard. There is no advantage to it, so you can do them with one X press, but it's a lot harder for no good reason. It usually loses you precious height that you need for this trick. So just get used to doing it with mashing. It'll be a lot easier in the long one in the long run. Trust me. So uh, in in closing, um, perseverance is key to this trick. Don't get upset. Don't get flustered if you don't get this trick in like. A couple hours. This is a very difficult trick for beginners, but I assure you, if you keep putting in the time, if you keep practicing, you will get this trick consistently. It is not that difficult. I had to overcome this obstacle just like you. I was once uh, new to this game, I was once inexperienced, but um, now this trick is as easy as pie. So, uh, thank you all for watching, and if you have any questions, make sure to comment down below. Um, I'll try to address everyone and help anyone who's uh, struggling with this trick. Thank you for watching, and uh, I hope this helped.